By Tuesday, in three days, the plant was organized. Management was suddenly confronted with a unified labor force. Then they asked management to sit down and listen to their demands. Let's face it, fellas. The last two years have been pretty tough for all of us. And here you are again asking for more money. You know as well as I do, we're in no position to pay any wage or rate increase. Who are you kidding, Mr. Lewison? I don't care whether you believe it or not, Lombardo, it's true. Yeah? Where's the proof? We must have sold millions of pencils last year. Why don't you show us some proof? Okay, Lombardo, we'll give you your proof. You bring your union order to here and we'll let them examine the company's books. All right, Mr. Lewison, we'd love to look at your books. This is my third bargaining convention. Uh, and this uh, was perhaps the... Uh, this bargaining convention had less energy than most that I've seen. Um, by that I mean that coming out of the international, They, 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 it seemed to me that uh, they were much less aggressive, much less positive. They're kind of back on their heels. But what, what was also different to me was what was coming from the floor. Now, in the past, there, there have been oppositional people, and we had some good, strong opposition out there, people that were challenging, challenging the status quo, challenging the international to uh, be more aggressive. Mike Parker kicked it off early when he challenged the very rules on which the convention was based. Um, and, and, and that was strong. And Justin uh, Double Barrel West, uh, you know, packed everything into his speech. He had five minutes and, uh, and he packed it all in. It was a great job. In all conversation, there's a text and a subtext. And what I'm hearing at this that's most interesting is the subtext. And by that I mean people are saying things like, I rise in opposition to this resolution because the language isn't strong enough. Now they're being very polite, they're being civil, they're expressing support for Ron Gettelfinger and the administration. But they're saying the language is not strong enough. That's a subtext. And what they're saying is, I can't go back to my local and sell concessions. I can't go back to my local and tell them, we're going for a two-tier. It's not going to fly. I do believe that this international rep executive board is listening. And I think they know how to listen to the subtext. They're not stupid people. And, and for that reason, uh, you know, I'm encouraged by something that I've heard. Although, like I say, this, this bargaining convention doesn't have the kind of aggressiveness and uh, contention and drive that we've seen in the past. Um, it does have this, this, uh, this subtext, this low-level uh, grumble in the background. There hasn't been a lot of enthusiasm expressed for the, the administration's program because it's largely been concessions. And though Gettelfinger said like in his speech that he was going to strike Delphi, it feels like a hollow threat because it's so far down the road. It's too little, too late. It feels like we gave up everything that we had at Delphi. Whatever strength that we may have had, we've really surrendered. Yeah, I mean, most of the people have left the plants. They've closed my plant. They've closed uh, Anderson, Indiana. Now, the contract said you can't close these plants. Well, they did. They closed them. They brought in temps, and most of them have been made uh, permanent workers. But these people don't have the background in, in the union. They're not prepared to strike. Most of them came from jobs that probably paid less or they were unemployed. So they're not economically prepared for a strike like I was, like people that had been at Delphi for 20 years. You know, We were not only prepared for a strike um, financially, but mentally and spiritually and emotionally. We wanted to do that. We wanted to defend ourselves. 
at this point, it, it seems kind of late in the game. Uh, the, the most pressing question for me coming in here as a former Delphi worker was, what will happen to the Delphi retirees when the benefit guarantee expires? GM guaranteed the Delphi pension and health care for retirees. But the guarantee expires at the end of this contract. I asked Ron Gettelfinger, the president, what was going to happen. And he said uh, to get with the General Motors department. And uh, he later sent two representatives from the GM department to talk to me specifically about that issue. I appreciate that consideration and respect. They assured me that Delphi was a top priority, that it is their position, and they have told General Motors that they will not settle the Delphi situation until the benefit guarantee is triggered. What that means is they are determined to hold General Motors accountable for Delphi, not only for the retirees and their pensions and health care, but for the Delphi workers, the Southwest seniority workers. Uh, that was a real positive commitment for me to hear. But I asked, how can we, we can't trigger it ourselves, how can we do that? And they said, because we can cause them financial distress. And we consider that they are all already in financial distress. I asked, by that, do you mean strike? And they said, uh, that, you know, they, they didn't assert, yeah, we're gonna go out on strike to win this, but President Gettelfinger has publicly asserted that without reservation, repeatedly, and just did at this convention, that he was willing to strike Delphi to protect us. I asked uh, these two representatives, now does this, doesn't this mean then that GM workers may have to give up something in order to help these Delphi workers, since we're connecting, may, holding GM accountable? The response was, we do not represent brick and mortar, we represent people. I want to repeat that, <laughs> because he said exactly, we do not represent brick and mortar, we represent people. But then he was saying, we're not going to trade off one for another. We're going to make sure that these people are protected. Now, this is what I want them to hear. This is what they told me. I, I, I sense we have to wait and see, you know. We still have to wait and see how this plays out. But I'm glad I got that commitment. What I'm sorry about is that we didn't hear that commitment made publicly on the floor of the convention. Because I raised this issue at the Constitutional Convention and he wouldn't speak publicly for the record. Uh, and talk to me privately. So there was nobody like myself to raise the issue at the convention and ask them to state for the record. So once again, they spoke to me privately. I'm glad to hear that reassurance. I appreciated the consideration and respect they showed me in coming out and speaking to me, but it was in private. And we need, Delphi UAW members need to hear that commitment stated publicly. Perhaps they feel that they have, but not specifically to the question of the benefit guarantee, which is what hangs over everyone who's retired from Delphi what's on their mind. The convention as a whole, I, I think that um, there, there were some uh, challenging members out there who spoke very uh, forcefully and passionately. Gary Walkowitz brought up that uh, he's got thousands of signatures of people who want no concessions whatsoever. Uh, a lot of members do feel that we've given enough, if not too much, and that concessions won't save jobs. Paul Baxter made an excellent point when he said that uh, too often uh, the companies come back and say, we'll invest in this plan. But the condition for the investment is you have to give up 300 jobs. So that is no deal. We cannot make that type of concession and trade for investment. And 
if we're going to make some any kind of concession, it has to mean we're getting something. That and that uh, whatever sacrifices should be made should be made equal. Uh, the one brother who said very politely, very politely, my membership hates two tier. We support you, but I can't come back to the membership and say we're going to get two tier. It's not going to apply. That was the other disturbing element about this convention. Uh, the resolutions book did not address two-tier whatsoever. There was not a hard statement against it, which indicates to people that it's on the table and, and we may be headed in that direction. Well, Mike was saying that you know, it sort of lays out an excuse. Or, or... Actually, there was language saying we understand that there are situations in which we have to be competitive, and yeah, it did actually insert language saying we're open to that, that it is on the table. Uh, what we fear and what most members understand is that it, it's a recipe for destruction for the union, and that in the long term it will destroy us. I'm afraid they're willing to make that trade-off at this time. There wasn't any talk about a strike, other than in, in, in uh, Gettlefinger's initial address about Delphi. He but did say striking Delphi. Yes. Yeah. Well, the papers are always looking for that. Right. <laughs> Those are vital. Right. So what would you say the headline was uh, of the, over, over two days? Over two days? Uh, the, the subtext? Yeah. The <laughs> I, I, I think I would have highlighted uh, you know, some of the, the challenges that were made, uh, that, some, that there were people who were adamantly resisting concessions whatsoever. And why I say that, of course, is that I listen differently than, than an outsider or a newspaper man. Because, or a first-time delegate. First delegate, but you know, I have an experience on the shop floor, and so I'm hearing people's everyday conversation. And they're feeling more and more intense pressure from management. They're getting pushed harder, and they're angry, and and they're telling them, you know, we've had enough. Uh, people don't want concessions. They don't believe in concessions. Uh, they don't believe it's going to help. But like I say, at the convention, that is because it's it's in public, and and people want to be civil. It's said in a more polite way, and I believe that. That's why so many people said, I rise in opposition because the language is not strong enough. I think Meaning, that would have been my headline, the language is not strong enough. Meaning they will support it. Um, Meaning that the, the language in the resolution is too goddamn weak. And we're looking for a lot tougher stance than this. And we feel a lot tougher than this. And this is, we do not look to our leadership to be soft. We do not look to our leadership to have to say, and eh, maybe this and maybe that, and you know, we got to be competitive and we want to cooperate. You know, we need a, a leadership that's sounding very tough. Yes, both sides gay. Management now has no strikes to stop production. The workers have more enthusiasm for their jobs. Hourly production is up 15% company gets more productivity. It gets a fair day's work. The workers have more security. They feel they belong, that they are part of a team. They have a fair chance to advance. They get honest consideration of their problems and grievances. They found it pays to do better work, to suggest improvements. They get more money for more production. They get a fair day's pay.